Hey guys, welcome back to All in Law. And this is a quick OBGYN. Okay? So today I'm going to talk about physiological discharge. Physiological discharge. So what's a physiological discharge? In the previous video we discussed about the bacterial vaginosis and trichomonas vaginitis. Here we're gonna talk about physiological discharge. Remember the physiological discharge is because of estrogen. It's because of estrogen, okay? So what's a physiological discharge? It's nothing but it's a thin watery cervical cervical mucus discharge okay it's a thin watery cervical this comes from cervix cervical mucus discharge okay and it's a, remember it's a physiological discharge so it's a normal phenomenon nothing to worry okay and it becomes a complaint okay it becomes uh, what you got complaint with the uh, prolonged and ovulation particularly in the patients with the wide aversion of a columnar epithelium okay prolonged and ovulation prolonged okay what are these factors uh, the risk factor for developing this physiological discharge is uh, chronic and related conditions such as PCOS, that is a polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS and polycystic ovarian syndrome is a really very important topic for your somebody and for medical students. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna discuss later and upload the video on that. Okay, so what are the risk factors for this physiological discharge? Is a PCOS, that's a chronic and related condition such as. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay. Remember, in this patient who has a physiological discharge, they don't have any complaints like itching, burning, as we see in trichomonas vaginitis. Here, the patients complain only of thin, watery discharge. That's it. But in case of bacterial vaginosis, they will have a discharge, but it's a fro but it's a fishy odor. Here, there's no odor, nothing like that. Only thing is thin watery discharge. That's it. So on examination, that is speculum examination, the vaginal discharge is typically thin and watery. We know very well. The vaginal epithelium is normal appearing with a no inflammation. And the important point over here is very important point is the pH of the vagina that's less than 4.5. But we don't see this pH raised what you call um, this low pH in case of bacterial vaginosis or in trichomonas vaginitis so that's an important point you should look for in US MLE okay it's a pH vaginal pH right so wet mount microscopic examination reveals absence of WBCs because there is no what you call uh, um, infection okay no clue cells no trichomonas no pseudohyphae okay so how do you treat it? What's the treatment? What's the treatment? How do you treat it? The treatment of choice is a steroid contraception with progestin, remember? Steroid. With progestin. What it does, which will convert the thin, watery, estrogen-dominant cervical discharge to a thick, sticky, progestin-dominant mucus. That's it. So we are giving progesterone or progestin. It makes a estrogen-dominant secretion to progestin-dominant secretion. Means it becomes a thick. So here we came to know that the progestin makes the discharge thick. That's it. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure this video was helpful for your USMLE or for any other medical board examination. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.